And now we're sort of, you know, we're here at sort of midlife, right, around 50. And the doctor says, you have metabolic syndrome. And we freak. But the good news is, so say our health were a line chart. This is time. And this is health to disease. So hopefully we're all blessed with health when we're born, right? And then hopefully we continue on and, and we get healthier. And then as time goes on, we start to make less discerning choices, especially in college. And it come, we come up here, and now we're sort of, you know, we're here at sort of midlife, right, around 50. And we've made some not good decisions, and we've had a lot of carbohydrates and sugar and some big gulps and some processed food, some McDonald's, a lot of tequila. And we're here, and the doctor says, you have metabolic syndrome. And we freak. But... The good news is, is that with discernment and good choices, we can bring our health back down pretty quickly. This is not a steep enough line, actually. It can come down pretty quickly, and we can be healthy again. However, if we do not listen to the doctor and we just continue to do whatever we want to eat and drink and not pay attention to our body's wisdom, this will progress and we will get diabetes and cardiovascular disease and possibly cancer and die. We're all going to die, but you know, when do you want to do it? And how healthy do you want to be on the, on the journey? So what is this metabolic syndrome thing? Yes. Sure. Mm -hmm. It's a blood test. Okay. The, the answers are in the blood. We're going to talk a lot about the blood. Okay. So <clears throat> metabolic syndrome is diagnosed when, remember we said it's a bunch of stuff that happens in a predictable pattern. And th that bunch of stuff is four things, and it's diagnosed when someone has three of these four things. Prediabetes pre-hypertension, abnormal cholesterol levels, and obesity of the fat around the middle kind. Big hips are okay. Big belly, less healthy. Dark chocolate, darker the better, I agree. And chocolate, just like glucose on its own, it's not necessarily bad for you. You have a bite of chocolate, so it makes you happy, everything's good. But if, say, someone were to take you to a chocolate factory and strap you down and force you to eat like two pounds of chocolate every day, right? Oompa. Right? <laughs> yeah, you become an Oompa Loompa. Um, eventually you would be like, no more chocolate, right? It would make you sick. You wouldn't want chocolate anymore. So that's what happens with the cells. They're smart. They're practicing brahmacharya. They know They've taken in as much glucose as they're going to take in, and they don't want any more glucose. Brahmacharya, no more, no thank you. So there's a lot of glucose now in the blood, on the cells, the bread blood cells. They're trying to bring more to the cells, and the cells are going like a little kid. No more. I don't want any more glucose. And the body wisdom is saying, pancreas, hello, there's all this glucose all over the blood. What are you doing? And the pancreas sends more insulin. And the cells keep saying, no mas, no more. I don't care how many times you try to put that key in the lock, I've changed the lock. I'm not taking any more glucose. It's out of balance. 
So now what we have is the body wisdom saying no more, but the blood is filled with glucose and it's filled with insulin. And that is prediabetes. We take a blood test, we see there's high levels of glucose, there's high levels of insulin, and right there you have prediabetes.